We talked to show director Blake Braswell about Mardi Gras, Marvel Dining Review, and more on episode 293 of the Unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. Hey everyone, I'm your host Lee, and joining me this week is Tracy. Hello! And Chris. Hey you. And thankfully, because he nearly wasn't, <laughs> Darren. <laughs> What's up, Internet? Awesome. Glad yeah. to have you on board, buddy, because uh, I was a little disappointed that you weren't going to be on tonight and for next week's as well. Yes, well, construction waits for no podcast. So. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> I did like uh, the conversation that we had where you weren't going to be there. It was like, you could have been recording live in front of the beat builders, or Darren, you got in with the one that I was thinking <laughs> about, live from the construction site of the new Wizarding World of Harry Potter roller coaster. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Chris? interested to talk to you about your recent trip later on but we will yes. get to that okay uh so we'll begin as we always do with i think we've only got a producers club birthday have we Tracy? uh yes oh it's a bit of a special oh one. it is it's a very special one oh. Oh. <laughs> i think we should sing for this one you know i wonder who it is <laughs> oh and the 28th of march it's this really weird guy's birthday. <laughs> it's Chris Savala's birthday. Hey. 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 Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Chris. Happy oh. birthday, brother. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Singing. I'm not singing. You're not singing. Oh. No. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> bum, bum. Happy birthday to you. Bum, bum. Happy birthday, dear Chris. Happy birthday to <laughs> you. That really went off key. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> cool. Uh, right. I think we'll get straight on with, we'll head over and listen to a little things with Seth because there's quite a lot to get to, actually. Hi, this is Seth Kaberski, and it has been a huge week for all the little things that are new around Universal Orlando Resort. Let's start out with the big news, which is the soft opening of Voodoo Donut in City Walk. I was among the first few dozen people to get to experience Voodoo Donut on Saturday, the 24th of March, when it opened a little before 3 p.m. for the first time to the general public. I have to say that the staff did a really great job of keeping the line moving. I only waited uh, just about 30 minutes for my donuts. I say it was well worth it. I'm sure they'll be talking plenty about Voodoo Donut in the podcast, but here's a couple little thing tips uh, one thing that hasn't been completed yet is the Voodoo Donut Throne, which is going to be a great photo op soon to be installed outside of the shop. Number two, the wrought iron spiral staircase in the middle of the new Voodoo Donut shop might look familiar. That's because it used to be inside Toothsome. They removed it from <laughs> Toothsome to make a little bit more room for merchandise, and it's now found a new home. And finally, here's great news for annual pass holders you will get your discount on donuts at the Voodoo Donut Shop. Uh, I nice. got my box of a dozen <laughs> from $28 down to 25 and change with tax. Okay, let's mm -hmm. head inside the parks where Fast and the Furious Supercharged could begin its own soft opening any day now. There was a special event for NBC Universal executives just the other night, and I could hear race car sound effects coming inside the building, so things are definitely revving up. <laughs> While you're waiting for the attraction to open, Universal quietly added some new Fast and Furious themed games to the park official app. If you go into the information for the upcoming supercharged ride, you'll notice a new option for the supercharged network. And there is a personality quiz, some photos, and trivia will be coming online soon. Just outside the Fast and Furious attraction in the San Francisco area, there has been a flying fish juggling show that's been going on in that area for a year or so. If you enjoy that show, Get out to the park and see it soon because I'm hearing that it won't be around for much longer. Another thing that won't be around for much longer is hot butter beer. Ooh. According to some team members, the hot butter beer was supposed to have been gone from the park by now. I was able to get some just the other day, but by the time you listen to this podcast, it might be gone until next winter. 
And one more thing that's almost gone is the Terminator 2 3D props that were briefly sold in the Hollywood prop shop. Universal has previously sold props from the Twister and Disaster attractions inside the Williams of Hollywood store. And recently they added some items from the closed Terminator show, including uh, parts of one of the robots and lettering. There's not much left now except a small control panel that they're asking $400 for and some framed photos. But if you get over there, you might still be able to pick something up. And we're going to finish up right outside of the Universal Orlando Resort on Major Boulevard, where a new residence inn has just opened this past week. I took a look inside. The rooms are really nicely appointed. Nice furnishing, USB ports and other technological upgrades. Uh, Brand new hotel for you to consider if you can't stay on property but want to stay as close to property as possible. And when you're driving on and off property, it's good to keep in mind that the exit ramp off of I-4 eastbound onto Kirkman Road North, near where Universal is, has been changed. It used to be a left-hand exit, and now it's a right-hand exit, so be careful when driving on I-4. That'll do for this time. This is Seth Kaberski from the Unofficial Guides, Touring Plans, Orlando Weekly, and Attractions Magazine, and I'll be back soon with more little things around the Universal Orlando Resort. So yes, as he said, that throne outside Voodoo Donuts wasn't there. It now is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's, it's something. It's a tasty looking throne. Yeah. Gigantic. <laughs> the challenge is on to see who gets their picture taken in it first, Darren or Chris. <laughs> uh, we'll see. You got like a two hour head start on me, Darren. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But go now. Darren's held back by a little puppy though. Yeah. It's about what? 15 hour head start. Just us. leave Nina at home, Darren, and just go yourself. I think you're classified as an emotional support animal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It seems to brighten everybody up when she's around. So. <laughs> yeah. Corgis have that effect. But they do. talking about Voodoo Donut, it does seem to be already massively, massively of popular. Course. It was never going to be anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. Sugar just, just gets everyone. Mm-hmm. Yes, it does. It does. I mean, a half hour, like it, they've got to be good for Seth to say that it was a half hour wait and it was well worth it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you're probably expecting a lot more. I think I saw at one point, I think Derek Bergen was tweeting about somebody waiting for touring plans over there for like 15 minutes. Right. And at the same time, they had somebody get in line for a flight of passage over at Disney and they were <laughs> waiting like, they only waited 40 minutes. <laughs> I'm going to put it in perspective. A 50-minute wait for a donut that apparently seems worth it to a 50-minute wait for your food at Cowfish that really wasn't. 50 minutes? That's <laughs> We waited about 50 minutes for our food uh, yeah. after we ordered it, after we'd been sat there for half an hour and no one coming in. Sorry, Robin and Michelle will be listening to this going, we had a good time there. Yeah, the yeah. Well, fish tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> As I say, it was obviously my complaint that made them pull the socks up and everybody else has had great experiences since. So you're welcome, people. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we sacrificed ourselves for you. I'm also glad that the uh, the discounts work here. The yes. Discounts. That's yeah. awesome. That's great to hear. Yes. When we go, you guys will have to be with us because I am planning to buy one of each. Yeah, especially when I'm buying one of those coffins. I want one of those real bad. The coffin yeah. is just good decor for, for our house, I think. Are they made out of actual wood mm-hmm. then? Yeah, I think I could probably put one together from Home Depot for about 10 bucks. <laughs> That's not the yeah. same though, is it? Yeah, no. It doesn't come full of voodoo donuts. No. I wonder how, how much is like three dozen donuts there? Well, you said Seth got it for 20. You said 25. 25, yeah. So it's normally like $75 for three dozen donuts. So That's what it comes with. And then the, the donut thing is like $128, I think. Did you say it was 134 count. Darren? Oh, yeah, it was 134 And then with a discount, it's probably around yeah. 20 I guess. So we're paying 50 yeah. for a coffin. Yeah, for not having to put it together yourself, I guess that's kind of reasonable. <laughs> I mean, we've already seen quite a few people have bought them, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Probably make like, a nice little uh, decor at the house, if you're into that. Yeah. 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 Going for the Beetlejuice be a, goth look. Yeah. Well, yeah, it would be a great place to store all my Halloween Horror Nights merchandise. Ideally, you just put some shelves yeah. in it and open it Absolutely. up. That'd be perfect. Some yeah. little LED lights. That'd be awesome. Cool. 
Well, actually, speaking of Voodoo Donut, we haven't done one for a while, and Chris came up with an idea that I thought, right, let's go for it, because I kind of come up with a plan myself, but I thought this was much better. So, Chris, over to you. Yeah, so it's been a while since the great Butterbeer debate, and it's way past time to get you guys involved again. So as Voodoo Donut in Universal Orlando City Walk is now open, we thought we'd take a public vote on which donut at Voodoo Donut is the best in our new segment called Which Voodoo Do You Do? (laughs) (laughs) Take a bow, Mr. Chris. Huh? Take a bow for coming up with that name. Quick one? Yes. (laughs) Uh, So send us your recording uh, from Universal Orlando City Walk, letting us uh, know which is your favorite donut. We'll share them on the show, and at the end of the year, we will compile the votes and see which is the best voodoo donut. All you have to do is record a MP3 on your phone and send it to us at podcast at uuopodcast.com or go to speakpipe.com forward slash uuopod, uuopodcast. Podcast, podcast, and record it there. It's UUO podcast? podcast. Yeah, it ah, is. Everything's go. always UUO podcast. Ignore my typing. So yeah, send us in uh, your recordings. Let's find out which is the best voodoo donut we got there. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's cool. I enjoyed the, like the great butterbee debate because people had a, a, had real fun with it, recording them in the parks and stuff. And it's for us that don't get to go out very often. Yes. It's always quite fun to hear. Still, team in the parks. pumpkin juice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, well, I was I, I went quiet because I was trying to find out because I'd worked out with voodoo donuts. Um, donut. What? It's voodoo donut. Well, okay. Well, you've written donuts in the script. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm uh-huh. talking about. So. I also Any- wrote you, you or PCAST, apparently. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different show, folks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you wanted to buy one of everything off the menu. Oh, my God. Have you got nothing better to do? You were part of the conversation and obviously missed this. Go on, then. If you wanted to buy one of everything. This includes the, uh, the coffin and the All various right. mixed boxes. One of everything. This includes the sales tax. It would cost you $335.76. That doesn't actually seem that bad. Yeah, no. That's a big belly ache, though. When you yeah, consider we... that, the, like we said, the coffin on its own is 134 that doesn't seem bad. Yeah. Yeah. Just have a giant producers club meet up and uh, everybody chip in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, get some people together and, yeah, we can, we can cut them up so you can try various that ones without awesome. dying. All, you know, all at once. <laughs> We'll and, bring some uh, insulin shots too. So yeah, that way yeah. we can, we'll bring a recorder out there and we can get everybody's recordings as well at the same time. So that'll keep us loaded up for a while. That will be brilliant, be awesome. actually. That would be really cool. All right, we'll see if we can set that up. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, no, there's no segue between that, but uh, Universal put a tweet out the other week that had the, the internet up in, up in arms. So Darren, oh, yeah. what the hell's going on with Shrek? Oh, God, yeah, people are going crazy about this. Oh, man, I'm live on the scene. Oh, geez. Uh, Speculation about the future of Shrek 4D at Universal Studios Florida ramped up a little two weeks ago when the Universal Orlando Twitter account posted a picture showing a video recording set up, recording uh, the Shrek character with the tweet of, it's not ogre yet. Stay tuned for awesome things to come. (laughs) And then, if that wasn't bizarre enough, the tweet was taken down (laughs) a couple hours later. So, obviously, somebody in PR got their hand slapped. Either like that, causing some kind of a either that or we're all being or, trolled. So so much excitement <laughs> on Shrek. They're like, I gotta post this right now. <laughs> <laughs> so if the rumors are true, the Shrek area will be changing immensely over the course of the next few years. Uh, rumors suggested the area could see a few new attractions with Kung Fu Panda being at the top of the list, which would make sense as it would follow suit with what Universal Studios Hollywood has done. Yeah. Mm. So Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. It was weird when it came. I was like, okay, hang on. Because it was like, I kind of said to Tracy, why is it whenever we seem to do shows about things, something comes out about it a week or so later? So we'd literally just done that Shrek show a week earlier. Yeah. And then this yeah. tweet came out. And you're like, okay, yeah. what the hell? <laughs> Who knows? Mm. Just get rid of it. But That's yeah. what I say. Yeah. If they're going to keep it around, they got to do some kind of renovations or something on the ride. It's just Change way the too. Whole thing. Yeah, just maybe a bulldozer. That's exactly what I was just going to say. I said, the problem is the entrance to Universal Studios Florida doesn't really have an identity. Like, we, if you talk about Islands of Adventure, you know, how much we love Port of Entry, mm-hmm. you walk into that park and you are immersed in it from the word go. And the entrance to, like, Production Central is just a, it's a nothing, really. Yeah. 
Maybe change it to like a Smash Mouth featuring <laughs> Shrek attraction. <laughs> Maybe more for that. I still think if they'd realized Despicable Me was going to be as big as it was, you might have had a Despicable Me area at the front of the park. Like That's... a super silly fun land play yeah. area for kids or something. Maybe just tear that down and put that there. But then obviously the hamstrung a little bit with Rip Ride Rocket being sort of shoehorned in there when they did. And, uh, yeah. It's not yeah. going to be an easy fix. Who knows? Uh, right. So moving on. Um, we haven't got many of these, so we'll uh, we'll tell you how to get them to us. But Tracy, would you like to read a spew out? I would. Not often I get to do this. Hi, guys. So I wanted to send in a spew from my last trip back in October. We brought my best friend and her husband with us for our, our annual Halloween trip and we're in studios for Halloween day waiting for Stay and Scream to start and to head over to our traditional Finnegan's Halloween dinner. We were walking past Mel's and saw that Beetlejuice was out. I immediately got excited and asked if anyone, wa- if anyone wanted to go over to say hi. No one did. So I skipped over to him, being he is one of my favourites in the park, and right when he sees me he greets me with Hey babe, I thought you were my boo! I was wearing a shirt that day that said, I'm not your boo, (laughs) with a little ghost on the bottom. I immediately said, of course I am. And he proceeded to be just his really creepy Beetlejuice self and kept his arms around me while I took a selfie with him. I told him happy Halloween and he yelled after me while I walked away not to leave him, etc. Awesome. Uh, To a lot of people, this may sound super creepy, but if you know the movie, that's what he does. And this actor's voice was so on point, and he gave the right amount of creep and weirdness I would expect from Beetlejuice. So shout out to whoever was playing him Halloween day and successfully making my boyfriend jealous of an actor in the park. It completely (laughs) made my Halloween complete. From Ali Schilberg. Awesome. Nice. That is so cool. Yeah, Yeah, I love that even though the the attraction's gone, they've still kept the character Mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's right. The person that plays him in the park does a great job. And it's just, I've never heard anybody having a bad interaction with him in the park. So, yeah, we've never seen him. Really? Yeah, I've never seen him just as a Roman character. Oh, well, yeah. No, we he saw, didn't really we saw him after the show, didn't we? Yes. That was it. The last time you guys were here. Yeah. 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 I think last time I saw him, he was, uh, he was hanging out by Monsters Cafe, hiding behind the door just to scare people coming out. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Still being he was picking trash at one point, too. But just randomly by himself and then just look at people and like walk away. <laughs> <laughs> what a job, by the way. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. I've like, sitting on the, job. Yeah, I've seen him sitting on the electric chair like it's a throne. <laughs> his like, wings are all crossed over and he's like stroking the edge of it there and <laughs> he just looks over at you and waves. It's nice. It's so cool. So, yeah, as I say, I think that is the last spew we've got. And that is <gasps> the Society for the Promotion of Employee Well Done. So, Darren, how can people do it? Well, we adore hearing your great team member experiences, so please send us more. If you have a team member go out of their way to help you make your trip extra special, then jot it down in an email and send it to us at podcast at uuopodcast.com and title it SPEW, and that's the Society for Promotion of Employee Well Dones. And don't forget to let guest services know as well. Absolutely. Very important because they get a lot of credit for that. They do. Yes. We can't push that enough. Cool. Right. Uh, shall we head over and listen to uh, uh, Did You Know with Mouse and Muggle? I think we should. Sure. Hey, guys. This is Michelle and Robin from Mouse and Muggle Travel Company with another great Did You Know tip. Hey, Robin. Did you know that you can actually see a Velociraptor hatch from an egg in the Discovery Center in Jurassic Park? No. Yes. I haven't been over there. I know. I'm so bad. Really? If that whole section, I'm... I haven't been over there in a very long time, so I, uh, when I'm by myself, I skip by it, but the past few times I've gone with Krissa, my six-year-old, you know, there's not as much stuff, because she's kind of a chicken, <laughs> there's not as much stuff for her to do as there, are, there is for the rest of us, so I did venture in there for her a couple of trips ago, and she loved it. It's really, really cool in there, um, and if you go downstairs, we just happen to stumble upon this ourselves. We, you go downstairs and there's a whole bunch of fake dinosaurs and activities and um, lo and behold, all of a sudden an egg inside the, I don't even know what it's called, but it looks like a lab, like you would see in the movie Jurassic Park. Mm-hmm. And they have the eggs and they kind of move and wiggle. And all of a sudden a lab worker came over to the window and said, oh, you know, one's about to hatch. And so everybody, of course, crowded around the window and we watched a velociraptor hatch. And it was That's really, awesome. really super cool. And then after it hatched, you know, they were standing there holding the egg and kind of talking about it. And 
they asked for suggestions on names from the audience. And um, so they picked one person from the audience to actually name the dinosaur. And they gave that person, after their little presentation was over, they gave that person a birth certificate that had the oh, name cool. on it. Yeah, and then I just found this out, that if you are one of those lucky recipients of a birth certificate, then on future trips, you could bring that certificate back with you into the Discovery Center and ask a team member how your dinosaur is doing. And um, so I, I just researched this a little bit, and somebody's experience was that they, the team member then took the birth certificate back into the back and said, let me go check. And they came back with like a health report kind of thing. <laughs> That's that was, cool. Yeah, it was an actual form that had been printed, but that, you know, they hand wrote in all of the answers. And it said something like, we love, we love Birdie and she's actually a pretty lazy dinosaur. You know, like they had this whole story up about the dinosaur and they said that you should go on the ride and look for her because she's out in the adult pen now, that kind of thing. Awesome. So. Yeah, that's really um, cool. Yeah, I thought so. So now it's like on yeah. my to-do list to get one of these first certificates. I know. <laughs> so. I just want to go see that happen. That's pretty cool. It was. Can I cool. name it, Michelle? I'm a very good namer. I'm scared of what you might name it. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they let you name it anything you want. Like pink flamingo or green Probably. diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> like as long as it's not like, you know. A swear word or something. Can you name it whatever you want? Uh, probably. I don't know. That's a good question. But I'd like to see you try to name one green diarrhea. I know. That'd be great. Or purple diarrhea. Purple diarrhea? Yeah. PD for short. I dare you to try to name one purple diarrhea and see what the team member says. It's on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, guys. Well, that does it for this week's Did You Know by The Mouse. And the muggle. They are two girls right up our alley. <laughs> <laughs> Diarrhea talk. You're all right in my book. <laughs> I'm just wondering if they'd just consumed a lot of sugar beforehand. That was... Sugar, yeah. Quite, we'll go with sugar. That was quite possibly yeah. the craziest one yet. Have they just been out? Are they still there? Have they that, come back? I know they've just they been out to you. They still be there at the moment. <laughs> Um, yeah. Yeah. I, would, I would love to see the health report on the T-Rex. Like if you got that as a dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, go check him out on the ride. He wants to say hi to you. Especially yeah. if you called it purple diary. Yes. Purple. Dinosaur. No. Mm. He says he always wants to meet the one that named him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, well, speaking of recent trips, how would you like that for a segue? Speaking of recent trips to the parks, Chris, you happened to go there last week. Yes. Um, we want to get into some of the little things you did, and obviously you went for Mardi Gras, but specifically you were charged, and I'll trust you, I know you hate oh, that word. Please, stop <laughs> using it. You were it. set the task of going and checking out the Marvel uh, the Marvel character dine, and, and bearing in mind that you've never done a character dinner or breakfast or anything. No. Have it. Shocking. None of them. So first one. Mm. So I'm going to play the live report first that Chris recorded from the Marvel character dining experience. Hey UOP, this is Chris and Alexa. Hey! And uh, we are here at the Marvel Superhero Dining. So we just got here maybe 10 minutes ago. Check-in was a breeze. It took maybe five minutes. Everyone's very friendly, very nice, and accommodating. So we got in here so far. We got taken into the line. It's a buffet style food, so we grabbed some food there. Food options are good. Not great, not terrible, but uh, some of them are standard park foods. So we got things like pizza, we have Alfredo pasta, some macaroni and cheese, garlic bread, salads, chicken parm with some prosciutto, meatballs, and a bunch of other things. And we'll definitely go back for most of those. At first tasting, you know, it wasn't bad, but like I said, it's, it's more park food. I would say I'd, I'd like to see a little bit higher, you know, quality variety for the price that's, you know, being paid for this. But so far, you know, it's not bad. And uh, we're waiting for the Marvel uh, characters to come around and greet us. And uh, we'll let you know how that goes along. So we'll check in with you shortly. Back for 
for update number two. So we've been here maybe a little under an hour. We've been able to eat some more food. Again, <laughs> park food, you know, not great, not terrible, but mm, digestible, let's say that. <laughs> uh, we had some Marvel characters come over to us. So we've seen Cyclops, Spider-Man, Jean Grey, and Storm. All very interactive, really cool. Oh, and Captain America. Captain America, That's too. That's right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was the uh, Rico Suave that was trying to take my girl away. But it's okay. Well, I did have his shirt on, so... That's true. But uh, all of them really cool, really nice. Taking pictures. We are waiting on Wolverine at this point and are going grab, to grab some dessert now. Oh, so. yes, we are. Yeah, we just been stuffing our faces the whole time. I've been eyeballing a piece of chocolate cake that's sitting there. Yeah, Cheesecake has my name. <laughs> so, oh yeah, I also forgot. One little pet peeve I have is oh, the, yeah. the silverware, or lack thereof. So we get to the table, has our quote-unquote silverware, it's plasticware. Paid for a dining experience. I want some silverware, not plasticware, but I'll forgive it. So, be back shortly. And we're back for update number three. So, we had our dessert, and the dessert basically kept the same trend going of the food. Okay, you know, nothing out of this world. Uh, we had the cheesecake, chocolate cake, chocolate chip cookie, and what are these little things called? Um, a meringue, right? Uh, like a meringue type thing. It was good. And a coffee. And a coffee little... Tart. Tart, yeah. Coffee tart. So, again, it was okay. You know, it was, it was decent. We took our pictures with the superheroes. A couple little tips that we got just from this trip is when you do this, if you do it, request to sit in the middle. We are sitting in the outside area, so it's a little dead over here. We're literally a wall away from the arcade, so we hear everything going on over there. Uh, we also, you know, don't get as much interaction with the superheroes. Uh, they're, they're good uh, when they do interact with you, but we did, you know, see that they, they take a while to get over here. I think it took half an hour for our first one yeah. to come see us, so that was kind of a bummer. Um, but when they do get here, they're, they're really cool. They, they talk to you, they, you know, they play the character, backstory, all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, overall, I would say come here if you are a diehard Marvel fan that needs to have an interaction like that. And if you have kids. And if you have kids, yeah. They, they definitely spend a lot of time with the kids. They, they, Not they, so much us because I guess we're adults. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're technically kids we're on the inside, kids, but yeah, but. yeah, no, but, but the kids, you can definitely tell that they sat down, spent some more time with them, and uh, you did autographs, all that kind of stuff, but if it's not that big of a deal, I'd probably say pass on it. I mean, for the price tag, the food just was not on par for it, and some of the other little things going on were also kind of off, um, but yeah, so, you know, take this info and uh, do what you will with it, <laughs> but that's uh, all we got left here. So, signing off, this is Chris. And Alexa. All right. Just to put this into perspective, Chris, it was about $105, I think, for the pair of you, if I'm th remembering correctly. Yes, yeah. It was 50, 50, 49 a person, and then the taxes and all that. And uh, no annual pass discount. I mean, that is steep. As a, a, Even if the kids are, the kids are going to be, what, say, 35. They were 34 99, yeah. Yeah, 35. So for a family of four, that's. The no, the kids, kids are aren't 35. Glasses. They're not kids at 35. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Sorry. so for a family of four, you're looking at what? $180 after tax. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah, I mean, going, going back to it, it's. I. I personally don't think the price matches the experience that you get there, especially the, the location that they do it at. It's over at Cafe Four. So that's a normal, you know, fast service yeah. restaurant. All they really did to change it up on the inside was they put like a barrier wall in between the arcade and there. And it has like a little Marvel background. So the characters will take you over there sometimes to take pictures. Mm -hmm. And there'll be a few of the, um, you know, my universal photo photographers over there. Yeah. Or they'll let you take it with your phone. A lot of them don't even have that photographer. They'll say, hey, grab your phone, take some pictures, right? Um, but that's really it that separates it. And, of course, you know, there's not a line anymore because it's, it's a buffet. So you kind of just grab and, and come down so you don't have to wait for food. Um, but where we were sitting, it was, it was literally right next to the wall where the arcade is. So mm. it, 
it doesn't give you, you know, you're paying for this character dining experience. You kind of want something a little bit different. It feels like you're in the same restaurant in Cafe Four during any other time, um, except that the characters will come up to you and talk to you. So, right. you know, that's that's that was kind of my issue. And again, like I said in there, big tip: if you go do it, request to sit in the middle, just because yeah. it, you know it was dead, and I don't even know why they sat us in the corner because there were plenty of tables open in the middle. Um, but the I think it took us, like I said, what thirty almost forty minutes for the first character to come see us. So that's a lot. A, yeah on a dead day like it was not packed so it was, it was kind of weird i don't know now, whether once, that comes down to them wanting people to get a chance to get the food and 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 have a decent something to eat before you then having to deal with characters maybe yeah it, it could be could be but um but yeah i mean aside from that going back to the food the food uh, the, again the price does not match what you're getting there they had a lot of variety they, they did have that but I would even say I would be okay taking away some of the variety if they just up the quality a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. So, and again, fifty dollars is not cheap here. No. I personally think that's an ex, you know it's a it's a pricey uh, dinner, so you should at least get a little bit better food in there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but like I said, once they, these guys came around, they were awesome. Spider Man was awesome. <laughs> Captain America was awesome. You know, everybody. Storm. Um, it, you know that that was fun. But overall, like I said, unless you're a diehard that you want to do this and have like that kind of interaction with them. Um, or if your kids just love this and that would mean the world to them, then, then at that point, you know, do it, but just go in there with the right expectations. Yeah. Mine were a little bit higher. So that's kind of why I was a little, you know, bummed out by the, the <clears throat> entire thing, given the price. Mm. Well, it sounds like that cost a lot of money for something that wasn't quite marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh. Chris, was it all you could eat? Could you go back multiple times or was it? Yes, it yeah. was all you can eat. And there was, like I said, the food was always there. Actually, another thing, now that you mentioned that, was since it was kind of dead, the, 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 the amount of people getting food, you know, it wasn't as high as it should be. So some of the food was sitting there for a little longer than it should be. Right. Mm-hmm. So not that it was bad, but you can just tell that it was like sitting there for a little bit. Yeah. So we would try to like alternate because they open up uh, where, you know, you go in to get your lines normally in cafe four to get your foods. Yeah. They open up both sides. So you can go down either side. So we kind of would switch from one side to another to see, Oh, maybe this one came out a little bit fresher. Mm. Um, but, um, but yeah, you can go up there as many times as you want, grab as much food as you want. So that was cool. That yeah. was you know, funny. They let me fill a Ziploc with this. <laughs> yeah. Trip. Uh, yeah. yeah. The same thing uh, for desserts. I mean, desserts, everything was already set out there for you. I mean, so, from the pictures you sent, Chris, when we were trying to get a blog post up, it looked good. It does. And it looks can be deceiving, as we found <laughs> out. <laughs> um, the, even, even the desserts. The desserts looked really good. Like the chocolate cake had like a strawberry drizzle on it and Ooh. the cheesecake looked great. I mean, it was it looked really good. We've been into it. It was okay. It was like I said, it wasn't bad. It was just CGI. okay. Mm. Yeah. So that's disappointing. Yeah, as long as you go in there with the right expectations, yeah. I mean, you're not going to so have that time. Go in with no expectations. It's difficult. It's really great, yeah. isn't it? Because, you know, <laughs> like, we've done a few character meals now, and, and uh, what you are paying for, mm-hmm. for the vast majority, is that character interaction. I think Confisco is yes. really the best one we've done. By Ag- a, agreed. Out of all of the that ones the food done, was as good shot. as the character interaction, yeah, and it's such a shame that they don't do yeah. it anymore. See, the one at Cafe La Bamba. It was okay. It was okay, but what I didn't like about it was the fact there were set meals. Yeah. And I don't eat certain things. Yeah. Mm. So, you know. But I was, yeah, I'm with you on the plastic cutlery. Was it yeah, silver? Was, was it silver plastic cutlery? No, it was black. Oh, it wouldn't have been. So, no. so it's just, it at least tried to so it's just the standard even, stuff that you get in there then. Yeah. Yeah, and it was even wrapped in a napkin and everything like a normal silverware mm. piece would be. But uh, but no, and, and even the plates were just like the standard, you know, black plastic plates. So again, for the price, I just feel like, you know, you should up it a little bit more, um, you know, whole dining experience, I guess. And the other thing that would have been nice, I remember a few months back, we were walking through Marvel and there's another little restaurant inside of Marvel and it's closed. Captain most America of the time. Diner. Mm-hmm. That one. That's where I thought when I heard about this Marvel yeah. dining experience, it was going to be. That's what I thought. And I thought that would be an even better location than Cafe Four because it's not normally open. This is not something you just normally go into. So it gives a little bit, you know, different environment yeah. mm-hmm. for you to do. And, and personally, if they move it there, I think it'll be even better for them because you're also in like the center of Marvel. Yeah, so. you've got better that views. Makes more you sense, can look actually. down. Well, you, can, you can see either. Yeah, because yep. it's on that the kind of corner, yeah. isn't it? Opposite um, 
Spider-Man kind of. Yeah, a little bit, like a little turn you gotta do there. Yeah. Yeah. Um the the something that disappoints me is the fact they're using plastic cutlery and plastic plates and with the current environment. Literally the yeah. environment. They proclaim they have this huge thing, green is no, universal. Green is universal, yeah. This is not very green. It's very disappointing. I think it's about time. It's the big companies, the big corporations like this that are going to make the difference. So to hear that yeah. they're using plastic tableware. To be fair, they reuse it, so. What did they? Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> what, well, they just wipe it off and there yeah, you that's go. Beetle just going to the garbage cans, yeah. picking them out. I didn't say how they're green. They're just green. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, you know, it's just. It's, they pick the bits yeah. of food off and replate it. <laughs> it's one of those yeah, things. No, when there are other sustainable Yes, it's a bit more expensive, but we're paying mm-hmm. premium prices anyway. But I agree. Yeah, that, I agree with that. Yeah, you I know, agree with that side of it. Thing. But when you're paying fifty dollars a yes, person, want... you expect cutlery and, and a, yeah. a plate, porcelain plate. Yes, it's not too much to ask for no. when you're paying for. That's okay. I'll take me on at fifty bucks a pop. Mm-hmm. A high end experience in a theme park. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And it, did, uh, it did include. Um, did include two. Photos, I believe, or a photo. Oh, that's not um, bad. Yeah, but it's it's a digital download. It wasn't an actual printout. Right. Uh. Which I, you know, it would have been cool if it was a, a printout. But since we have, and this is another tip for anybody going out there, we do have the uh, photo pass, like the year, the annual one. So when you have that, those tickets don't even matter. They just go show them that, and then you get all the pictures okay. anyways. See, that's so. ridiculous, that, though, because how much does it cost them to print a photo off? Nothing. Nothing, also, yeah. Also, interesting. throw away plenty of them. Interesting point. I know it's very much the minority, but not everybody has the internet or a way to digitally download something. No, I know it's a minority, but what happens if somebody says, well, I can't get this? That would be interesting right. to put to them. You know, cause if my mother, not that it'll ever happen, she won't get a play, <laughs> but if my mother ever went down, this is, this is the woman who's had a mobile phone for 10 years We're and it's still We're going really hypothetical here. But no, it's, but no, it is little things like no, this no, that need true. to be looked at. You and know, you normally honest. I always look for the tiny little things that need let's let's out. look at the scare actor dining for as an exa- as an example you get a free printed photograph as yeah. part of that experience really okay yeah and it's not yeah. as expensive as the marvel one is i think no. it's about ten dollars cheaper hmm no yeah. i know bush gardens doesn't compare 100 percent, but the hollow scream mm-hmm. uh, buffet dining experience before uh, hollow scream starts is 27 dollars and uh, the menu is pretty much comparable, if not uh, maybe even slightly better on their side, because there are some dishes that they make to order at the Bush Gardens thing. Wow. Um, and then on top of that, you get express for two hours afterwards, and there's a show that goes on during the, <laughs> while you're eating. So. Yeah, I remember you, Raven. You've always sort of put, promoted that, Darren, when you've said about going. So- yeah, I, always, I always talk about it, yeah, but just look at that compar- comparatively. Yeah. So fill your belly full. Then rush around <laughs> for two hours on all the rides. I know, through all the houses. I know. It's you know what I mean? passes on all the roller coasters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah I felt ill after doing work it. Off that <laughs> yeah. I felt ill enough not filling my belly going on every coaster in that park with you that other year. That was bad yeah. enough once. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, the, the price comparatively, yeah. I mean, and, and yeah, the food no, quality, like I said, is, is equal to or slightly better at Bush Gardens. So. If you're gonna break out the price of that, you're probably paying like ten dollars for the buffet total. Yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll be interesting. Or universal, so mm. it, it'll be interesting to see if because this is fairly new, right? It's been out yeah. like a couple months. Not even so, that, I don't think, has it? it? Maybe two months. Yeah. Um, I you know who knows if they start changing things around. Um, yeah. I'd be interested to see if they send me you know since I registered for it a specific um, survey. I haven't got one yet on uh, the experience there. Mm. Maybe they'll work on it. Mm. I don't know. I wouldn't hold it my was, breath. It was, it was pretty dead as well. And um, I that's, will say, I mean, it was a Saturday Yeah, during that, spring break. That's so the that's concerning kind of, thing. Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. But that mm-hmm. price, that yeah. put a lot of people it would off. Put me if, off it's it. spri- if it's spring break, some people stay away because it's spring break, so we're expecting all the spring breakers to no. be in there. Yeah, but you know, oh, it's, the, the and parks it's, are always rammed. Yeah, but it's, but that's not a student-friendly price. No, it's not even so, an no, no, adult-friendly no, no. no, price. not really. So, <laughs> so they've kind of shot themselves in the foot it's with the, the price and the launch time. Uh, the thing is, at the end of the day, it's it's par for the course for theme park experiences, really. Uh-huh. They're expensive. Yeah. 
anyway. So, um, I mean, the, the other part was obviously Mardi Gras. That, I will say, I don't remember last year, but uh, we were looking forward to grabbing also some, some of the foods from the booths this year. And um, I don't know if they changed the times because I feel like we got food earlier last year. But this year, when we went to go in there early, we uh, went there. The booths were closed. They said they opened at three or four. So it was kind of kind of weird for us. Um, and we were starving. So <laughs> yeah. um, they, they took away some of the, the, the food items. They still had some of the you know traditional stuff that you'd see there at the crawfish and um, you know shrimp and jambalaya and all that stuff. Um, my f- we went there with a, with a couple friends as well, and um, they said it was okay. Yeah. My girlfriend really liked it the year before. This year she tries, she goes, eh, it's okay. okay. Um, the band that plays out there was awesome. Yeah, they had uh, like the street band, which I love. I love mm-hmm. the music part. I will say I noticed this year there was a little bit less of street performers walking around earlier in the day. Like They came out at the much later, I think. And they were all kind of bundled up to the back area right where uh, Jimmy Fallon is. And that's also where the band was playing. It was like a little setup band over there. But um, it was cool because they had like uh, they had all the stilt walkers and they had, um, you know, a bunch of characters in in costumes and they're everybody's dancing. So it's almost like a street party they're doing there. And um, like I said, the band was cool. You know, that whole experience was great. Uh, That night was was it Foreigner. Yeah, that night was Foreigner. So. That was interesting. We, uh, I did not know there were that many foreigner fans. So <laughs> we, we, we obviously stayed for that. And maybe, I don't know, like an hour prior, uh, it started getting bad. So they closed off a bunch of, they, they pretty much built a center lane that bypasses the stage just to get you out of the park. So it got really, really crowded um, about an hour prior to the concert starting. And they completely maxed out capacity of of the entire you know park stage area. Wow! Uh, and the surrounding area, it was it was crazy. Like when we went last year, I believe we saw UB40, uh-huh. and that one it was it was kind of a calm event. You know, yeah. you know obviously I'm, I'm sure there's not a huge UB40 following, but um, <laughs> but you know it was it was fun. You can just stand around, you can dance with people dancing, all that kind of stuff. This year it was like sardine shoulder to shoulder wow. person. That's yeah, it fun. was it was insane. That's um, a foreigner. Exactly. That's what I thought. Like I said, they have a much bigger following than I thought. Um, so we stayed uh, for that for a little bit. And then, I don't know, maybe halfway through, uh, we ended up leaving. Um, but yeah, that was fun. And we actually, we went back the next day and um, Alexa found out that Fifth Harmony was playing. So we're like, oh, we have to stay for this. I'm like, wonderful. So <laughs> we, we ended up uh, staying for that one. Obviously, it was, I mean, it was, it was a Sunday. So it was much much less packed. Uh, we were able to get kind of close and everything, and she got to go see her, you know, show, and it was good. <laughs> cool. Good yeah, I do believe you got to uh, ride a float as well, didn't you, Chris? Oh, that's right. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> how do I remember and you forget? <laughs> I, I completely forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> so we tried to do. We've been wanting to do the float thing. So as pass holders, we when the sign up comes on. You know, we'd love to do it. The thing is, they put it up months prior. We can't plan out this. You know, we, we don't really plan it out. Yeah, hey, we're going to go this specific week and we should do it a month before, maybe. Mm-hmm. So by the time we knew we were going on this trip, all those spots were taken. So we had to go the normal route of, you know, waiting standby. On Saturday, we went there and it was slammed. We go, we're not even going to bother because they only had a few spots left and the line had maybe 100 something people left. In. Wow. wow. <laughs> so we go, okay, forget it. We're not going to do it. We'll do it next year. And then, like I said, we ended up going to the park on Sunday. And we literally just go, hey, for fun, you just want to see if there's anything there? And she's like, yeah, let's go. So we went back there. There was, they just brought in the people that were in line. There was nobody left in line. I walk up to the guy. I'm like, hey, uh, you got any spots left? He goes, we may sit down over here and, and, uh, and what will come to you, right? Now, let me just add a little like uh, quote in here or asterisk. I had my birthday pin on. So oh, that awesome. may have helped. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. So we, we, we ended up sitting there. We, we go to get our, our wristbands. And I'm like, all right, cool. Which one's this one? He goes, don't worry. You'll know and enjoy it. I'm like, oh, okay. That's super creepy. So <laughs> <laughs> we go in there and turns out they put us on the king and queen float. And awesome. they made us king and queen for Mardi Gras. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I hope they're not listening was... to this show because they'll go, that lion. 
it's not his birthday until <laughs> next week. <laughs> Um, but yeah, they, they, they made us king and queen. We got to put on the, uh, the robes and the crowns and, uh, it, it was a really cool experience. That was my first time doing a float and doing it as a king and queen. It was, it was, it awesome. was really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. They gave us way more beads than we can throw. So I really want but, to do that. I know. Yeah. It's, cool. it, if you get the chance, if you guys ever do go out there for Mardi Gras and anybody listening, Go to Mardi Gras and try to get on the floats. It is such a blast. You will not have a bad time. Darren, I know you've done the balloon handling for the Macy's. Have you ever been on a parade float for the Mardi Gras? No. When they do those sign-ups, we always try to like uh, message back right away or whatever and just pick one of the days at random. And uh, I never got, I've, I've never yet to get a response back on that. So <sighs> I didn't know they had a standby thing in the park. So Yeah. And the, and the standby, just a, another little like pro tip in there is I think they said at, again, depending on the day, but. 545 was the cutoff where if you didn't show up for your reserve time that you had, like if you did it months prior, that's it. You're out. You'd have to wait in the line again. Okay. So mm-hmm. if you don't want to wait all day, because there were people that would get there hours before, and I, I didn't want to like waste time doing that no. either. Go there 530, check it out and see. And if 545 hits and you know there's no line, you have a good chance of getting on the float. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Good that tip. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Right. Well, speaking of Mardi Gras, I'm going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back with an interview that Tracy and I managed to do uh, was it, about a week and a half ago now, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, we had the opportunity to sit down with one of the show directors for the Mardi Gras parade this year, Blake Braswell, and it's awesome. So, yes. And there's a few Lovely things you guy. just mentioned there, Chris, that you'll find out why they were the way they were. So mm, I'll take a quick okay. break and then we'll be back with Blake. Hey guys, Michelle and Robin here from Mouse and Muggle Travel Company. Sorry to interrupt this awesome episode of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. We promise not to bore you this time. So, blah, 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 we sell vacation packages. And blah, 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 we are experts on Universal and Disney destinations. And blah, 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 our services are free to you. But what you might not know, we're just a couple of super cool ladies who like to have fun and know all of the tips and tricks to make your vacation all you had dreamed it would be. You can learn more about us at mousesmuggle.com and fill out a quick quote request form while you're there. Just be sure to let us know you heard about us from the UUOP. And remember, whether you're a mouse or a muggle, Mouse and Muggle Travel Company can help make your next vacation simply magical. We are incredibly honoured to be joined by Blake Braswell, creative show director, sorry, for Universal Orlando. So, Blake, thanks for taking the time to come and speak to us. We really appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me on. It, you are more than welcome. Our pleasure. It's always great to hear people that, uh, that create the awesome things at Universal. Because mm-hmm. let's be honest, they are awesome. Yes. Oh, well, thank you. I'll take that comment. I'll pass it along to everybody else. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so first of all, obviously, Blake, for people, who, you know, for our listeners who don't know who you are, can you sort of give us a brief history of your time at Universal Orlando? Yeah, sure. Uh, I actually uh, started here uh, in 2014 um, as a performer, actually, as, as part of uh, what was happening over at Diagon Alley in our Wizarding World of Harry Potter. And uh, prior to that, I had been working as a theater director and writer um, not only in tr- traditional theater, but also working in immersive theater. I uh, used to work and create uh, immersive experiences based off Edgar Allan, the works of Edgar Allan Poe and the works of Charles Dickens uh, up in Pennsylvania. So that's what I was doing prior to coming down here and uh, came in here and worked as a, a performer for a little while and then worked on HHN 25 my nice. first time as assisting the show direction crew. Um, and that was uh, <laughs> that was a interesting first Halloween to work to do the, the anniversary of HHN 25. So what was cool about it is I got to learn a tremendous amount, uh, amount of the history uh, literally on the job um, and then went into show directing uh, for HHN 26 for the scare zones uh, and uh, for HHN 27 scare zones and um, and now uh, and also had an opportunity to work on uh, in Macy's on 2016 here at Universal. Cool. So cool. A personal experience. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much for Halloween Horror Nights 25 because it was amazing. Yes, it was. <laughs> we had a lot of fun. Yes. <laughs> so did we. <laughs> <laughs> so, th- so this is the 23rd year of Mardi Gras. Wow, 23 years. Yeah. Um, at, at, at Universal Orlando. So when did you guys begin working on this year's event? Um, well, I actually walked into this event partway through that process i inherited it from a show director named jason horn and uh, so it was a very daunting uh, because he's been doing this for the last few years and he's he's 
frankly been doing a great job of it. Uh, the Mardi Gras event has has really flourished under him. Um, so uh, so that that was a little nerve wracking. Um, but he helped hand the reins over to me very well, and I sort of got in, indoctrinated on everything that was going to be for this year's Mardi Gras. Um, very different than Halloween, obviously, because uh-huh. we're putting on a big party. Yes. Um, I want people to come rush in and play as opposed to scream and run away. Um, <laughs> yes. So a slightly different vibe. Um, but I, I can kind of give you an idea of how long out we do things in the sense that uh, just this uh, past week, we had some of our um, team from uh, Creative Development uh, come back from New Orleans, uh, and we are working on Mardi Gras 2019 and 2020 wow. Wow. off of those. Yeah. Because I know, like with Halloween Horror Nights, that event, you know, the the preparation for the next year usually happens sort of at the beginning of the previous year, and it's crazy that it takes that long to put an event mm-hmm. like this together. Yeah, we keep trying to give ourselves as much time as possible. Mm-hmm. Pretty soon, in in two years, we'll be working on twenty fifties Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we know that your your main focus this year, working at uh, at Mardi Gras, Blake, was the parade. Can you sort of give us a, a brief sort of overview of the story behind this year's parade theme? Yeah, so, uh, you know, with something like Mardi Gras, where it's it, 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 at 23 years especially, right, it's it's a tradition. Um, and there are certain things you, you got to have, right? You have to have the parade. You got to have the Cajun food. You've got to have the bands out on the street. Yes. Um, and, and those are the elements that you must have. So then those in-betweens kind of give us an opportunity to play and, and bring something new to it. Uh, and that's where, you know, doing our, our themes each year gives us a chance to kind of expand upon something. And what's really cool is uh, the Kern Studio are the folks that we partner with t- that make the floats. And they are the people in New Orleans that have been making the floats uh, at Mardi Gras since 1932. Wow. wow. Um, Amazing. And, and working with them, you know, they have educated us uh, that one of the traditions of Mardi Gras in New Orleans, and we're going way back here, <laughs> always was part of it was they would use what they put in the parade to um, to educate people or open their minds or enlighten them in the sense that, you know, now we've got, you know, mass communication. Obviously, look at what we're doing right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's so easy to, to, to reach across and, and talk to each other, see what's going on. But at the time, that's not really occurring. So they would they would put things in the floats to, to sort of introduce people to, to, to new ideas um, cool. or to educate them. So um, that's kind of a cool tradition uh, that is a part of actual Mardi Gras in New Orleans um, that also ends up happening here. So, you know, this year as we kind of we're looking at the different things we could play with, things that uh, Kern had done in their past, things that we had done in our past. We had just played with mythological creatures uh, prior uh, as a theme. And we started looking at the constellations and you've got all these characters and creatures from mythologies from all over the world that play into the constellations mm-hmm. uh, a lot of them you know bent to sort of a, a greek uh, whereas we looked at like andromeda and we looked at um, like orion but then it also gave us an opportunity here's the 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 those are constellations people may know mm-hmm. um but then to introduce to people the uh, constellations they may not know like scorpius uh, serpentarius those sorts of things that uh give you a, a different look of what what might be out there so we kind of came uh, up with that theme to do the constellations um and then once that ball sort of got rolling on our side and we talked about what we wanted we partnered with kern we got the floats there and as the floats designs were coming back then we're you know partnering and sharing this with our costume designers and our lighting designers and our effects designers audio designers and then everybody's you know bringing in their ideas of how we can help reinforce the story of of the constellations as we go forward it's such an amazing process when you think how many elements are that have to come together yeah. to create that one thing. And I think a lot of people, like the general guests, don't don't see that. They just see an awesome parade. Yeah. And, and well, th- this is why we're doing this, so they do get to appreciate absolutely. the work that goes into it. Well, it's true. I mean, every time I've ever been given a compliment, you know, about hey, you know, you did great on Mardi Gras. I, it is very hard for me <laughs> to say thank you because I know that it's not me it's yeah. all the people that that I worked with yeah. and that we collaborated with to really make this happen you know before it even opens and then of course all the people that are actually making it happen you know day of yeah. from text to you know food and beverage to our performers mm-hmm. you know everybody so um you know of course like you said that's we see all that on this side and we know how much it takes to put everything together and it yeah. is awesome I will get to see it in person I know, one day I know. <laughs> Um, for those people that have yet to see the parade, um, can you explain the new floats, how they fit into the overall theming, and what are some cool elements people can be looking out for? Yeah, so 
this year, let me see if I get them all right. So our, our new floats <laughs> based on the constellations are Orion, uh-huh. Taurus, Scorpius, uh, Serpentarius, um, Andromeda, and Virgo. Boom. Got them all. Oh, I <laughs> promise well you, that wasn't even written in front of me. Um, <laughs> Sorry, can I just quickly ask, is Serpentarius the one that's kind of like three trailers together? No. That's the, the alligator no, one. That's no. the al- yeah, I wasn't sure. Except, yep. Yeah. Sorry. That's our king gator. Serpentarius, um, or I think the other term, the Greek term was Orpheus. Um, but Serpentarius uh, is very serpentine. You'll see. You'll notice that one because uh, the front piece has got the serpent wrapped around it, and uh, our stilt walker that's kind of walking through, representing it. Uh, he's uh, yes. got this large snake that's hanging yes. around his shoulders. I realize my error now. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Carry on <laughs> as you were. <laughs> well, but no. So uh, I mean, like e- each of those uh, floats, we got to you know figure out how to bring to life, uh, and some are uh, some. What's where some are easier than others in the mm-hmm. sense that if you're doing Orion, well, then you know that um, once you've seen your float and what you've got and you're representing the constellation of Orion, when it comes to, say, characters and performers that are out on the streets, uh, the easiest thing to say is, well, we've got to have Orion, right? Yeah. So we have to we have to actually have a, a character of Orion who's out there. So those things present themselves. Um, uh, there's some that present themselves kind of obviously about w- how we can go with what kind of characters. Now, how our costume design uh, designer actually pulls that all off, that's a totally different story. <laughs> but in terms of just the initial ideas, but like, for example, um, for the Scorpius uh, float, um, that one has a much more sort of Egyptian feel to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the characters, uh, I love like one of the ground performers, she wears this headpiece and it's like a golden uh, scorpion that's on top of the head. And it's such, so sweet looking. Awesome. Um, and the big scorpion up front. And as it travels through, these yeah. big jets of CO2 blast out from under <laughs> its, its mandibles. Um, so that kind of stuff's a ton of fun. And then, of course, we got yeah. flame over on the Taurus uh-huh. float. Yes. Um, yes, I like that. And confetti, fog, and the lighting. Um, the lighting design is 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 great. Uh, yeah. That's a really fun. Once the floats are kind of wrapped up by Kern, when we come back on board with them, our lighting team just goes nuts, <laughs> uh, and they really help do that final layer of bringing everything mm-hmm. to life that's out there. Uh, but uh, Scorpius is a ton of fun, uh, as well as uh, Taurus uh, with the the flame jets. There's uh, Andromeda looks like she's floating on a cloud because we've got a bunch of fog going out underneath mm-hmm. with LED lighting awesome. effects that goes uh, that go underneath. So each each unit's got its own little special something that helps tell its story. Yeah, it, let's be honest, it so wouldn't cool. be Universal Orlando if there wasn't some sort of flame effect somewhere yeah, in there. True. <laughs> we like flame around here. It's true. <laughs> we appreciate. We it. We absolutely do, especially <laughs> on a cold day. <laughs> um. So yeah, you know, Mardi Gras is one of those events, Blake, that that, uh, annual pass holders and just uh, like people in the area will come and visit many, many times to see those little details as well. So is there any little details in there for those people that have seen the parade many, many times already that you can point out that they may not have noticed? Um, Well, one of my personal favorites, and it's because as a kid, one of my favorite movies was Ray Harryhausen's you know, Clash of the Titans. Yes. yes. So I was very, very excited that our Perseus character, when it was brought up that um, our our makeup team was actually going to design a Medusa head that he'd carry around. Cool. And that we could light up the, the eyes. That makes the little child in me so happy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, every time I see uh, Perseus traipsing around. Um, as far as the detail that I think is kind of neat, that that you you may not, people may not notice, but they definitely will feel and this yeah. is actually prior to the parade. Uh, so for our the day leading up to um, the actual parade occurring, you know, we've got Mardi Gras music playing, theme music playing through, you know, our, through our background uh, uh, music. And this year is the first time that we got rid of the, I think it was a 45 or 50 minute uh, worth of music. We got rid of all that and redid an entire uh, two and a half hours worth of music. Wow. A completely different playlist that would play is our background music today. And we really took the time to find as much sort of fun and uplifting stuff that would just make you start tapping your feet before you realized it. And it's one of those things that, you know, so people may not necessarily notice that from year to year, uh, but I think uh, your brain does. You feel it. Yeah. And it yeah. makes a, a, a party atmosphere already start to happen well before we actually get to the parade itself. Absolutely. Definitely. The music's such a, it's such an integral part of theme parks. And, and we've said it quite a lot on the podcast before. It's one of those things that you don't necessarily notice. It's a subconscious thing, but you would miss it if it wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Without a doubt. Oh, 
Absolutely. And there's no way you can hear this Mardi Gras music and not smile. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've still got feet. Don't fail me now. Yes, running through my I head was already. I'm all about myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so one of the great things that guests can get involved with this year is a pre-parade. Um, and we know that's one of your favourite things, Blake. So in your opinion, what makes this not only a great addition, but tons of fun for everyone? Uh, this is one of my favourite things because for, for me, one of the best things that we do at Universal, just daily, not even just for our special events, is the the one-on-one guest interaction that occurs. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and Mardi Gras gives an opportunity to draw in people uh especially people that might maybe maybe they wouldn't have jumped in on something yeah um, but we've got our parade performers you know before the the parade goes out they've all come out and um and yes they go out and they meet and greet and they have fun talking to people taking photos and and they'll do some games for people to try and win some beads but one of my favorite things they do is they partner with uh, the bands that play out in the street from new orleans that we have and they create these dance parties and it's yeah awesome because at first you'll you'll go out there and you'll you know the band's playing and you'll see the performers out there just kind of groove into it and then slowly you know a, a, a little kid or two will come up and join them and then they're dancing <sighs> with them the next thing you know they've grabbed their parents and then you know what was 15 people 30 people is 40 people and now they're putting on their own little mini mardi gras parade <laughs> doing conga lines and dancing with all the guests and that part for me is being involved with mardi gras as a show director is my absolute favorite part of the event is seeing that one-on-one interaction with the guests. Cause what's really cool is to see uh, something like that happen. And then later on, a a couple hours later, the parade's happening and I might be standing watching the parade near a family who I saw little kids, you know, you know, dancing with a couple of performers. And when those performers come by on the parade and recognize them and see them watching and, and wave to the kids or either come over and talk to them in the middle parade and the way they light up, it's, it's perfect. Oh, that's that's so special, isn't it? It's I'm moments say, like that you can't you can't force; they just happen. That's not just a kids' thing as well. As an oh, adult, really? that's pretty yeah. cool as well. Yeah, <laughs> it brings out oh, the yes. child in all of us. It does, and it's like those interactions. They're the things that that make memories on on people's vacations. They're the things you remember. Oh, absolutely! I think that's the yeah. stuff that that you talk about forever. Yeah. That time you remember that they grabbed dad and he went up there and started cutting a rug with everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that those are the stories you remember. Definitely, Without definitely. Yeah. Um, so speaking of guest participation, one of those things, if we ever get out to Mardi Gras, I'm desperate to do, is uh, allowing guests to ride the floats and, and throw out beads. How much do you think that brings to the parade as a whole, Blake? Because it looks some, like you, you, you see people on throwing the beads and they have so much fun and yeah. it just adds an extra level to that parade that it's not just a passive thing, it's an interactive thing as well. To me, that's like where every layer of it gets better. Like you see the floats for the first time. You're like, yes, this is now becoming real. I see how they are going to look. And then, you know, you're, you're hearing the music like, yes. And then you get the cast in for your first rehearsals and you see the energy they're going to bring. Because, you know, you got some vets, but you got new people too. And there's like a new, you know, energy. And you can think this is going to be such a fun party. And then yeah. that last layer are the guests. Uh, and, and like you said, not just the ones who are watching and, and who are having a blast and, and screaming for beads, but those guests that join us actually on the floats, yeah. you know, themselves. Um, you got to come experience it because you will realize the power you have to make someone's <laughs> night by throwing a beads at them. Because, my gosh, as soon as the parade starts, people are just screaming for those beads along the parade route. Um, and I've, I've never – a lot of times what I do – um, I go out and watch the parade and then I'll, as the parade is exiting, uh, just sort of uh, be there, you know, talk to the, the parade performers on their way out, as well as the guests, just, you know, thanking them for coming in and, you know, being part of it. And every time I'm always like, thank you, you know, for helping make the parade great. They're like, thank, thank us. Thank, thank you. This was the best. <laughs> yeah. they, they love it. Yeah. It's funny, we've never experienced the Mardi Gras parade, but I remember coming over for Halloween Horror Nights in 2004 when mm-hmm. the, um, I can't remember what it was called now, the parade that used to be part of Halloween Horror Nights, and it was a very similar thing where they threw the beads out and people do go crazy yes. for it. I was laden down oh, yeah. by the end of the night. <laughs> it was wonderful. And uh, you can tell Mardi Gras is going on as I drive around, like, you know, between between work and home, and you you start to see more and more cars that have, like, beads hanging from the rearview <laughs> mirrors, awesome. and you know exactly where they got them from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it's that moment as well when you're, you're following a parade and you know there's beads being thrown out, when you make eye contact with one of the people throwing the beads, and, you, you, and they see you, and they aim for you. So you know those beads are meant for you. That is just... 
<laughs> it's one of the best moments when yep, you catch them. Yeah, that is them. yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, that is on my book list. I, know, I, I know. am going to be on a parade float. Definitely. Throwing beads. It's the best, I promise. Excellent. Next year, Lee. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, we heard that. Next year, okay, he said, okay. okay. <laughs> So I heard it. <laughs> you did. It's, it's been recorded. You got to do it. Has, it. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, overall, Mardi Gras 2018. It looks to be a fantastic event. I am devastated. I'm not there. I'll yeah, be honest. It looks awesome. Um, f- what do you think is making this year stand above and beyond uh, previous years? You know, it's funny because I uh, just started working on 2019 and 2020 Mardi Gras, and one of the things you do is you kind of you go back and you you look. Uh, you look at the past, you see what what you've done, and you know. And every year, um, we we do it. We say, "Man, this went great. How are we going to top it?" And sometimes when you're in the middle of it, you you wonder if you you wonder did did we did we top it? And what's crazy is to look back and think, "Wow, you know, here I see this picture from 2006, and everybody having all this fun, and it's great. But man, we are so much better now <laughs> than we than we were then. Um, you we just." I, I am impressed by the people I collaborate with and the teams that I work with, how they're able to, you know, take something that happens year to year, but then maybe polish it or add a little something to it each go round that elevates it, makes it a little more excited. Yeah. Um. I I love our performers. I can't tell you how many of them come up and tell me, uh, so many of them that I know through working with them at Halloween Horror Nights. That, that working Mardi Gras is their favorite thing. And it is so obvious when you see them out in the streets. And I and I feel that's part of the special magic are, are those performers that really reach out and, and, you know, make a connection with the guest. Yeah. And when you watch them, they're not, you know, some of them are some really good actors, but they are not acting out there. They are <laughs> yeah. having the best time partying every night. And, you know, now... You know, we run longer than we have before. Mm-hmm. We're seven days a week. And I got to be honest, these kids make me feel old. And I'm like, <laughs> How do you do this with so much energy, like all night long, every night? Uh, but they do. And it's 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 so awesome to watch. And I, I really I do uh, feel like uh, the cast uh, of our parade performers really, really do a lot to 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 make that happen every year. Absolutely. I mean, that comes across as a guest when when the the performers are having a blast, oh, it comes yes. across and it just it, it ramps that atmosphere up even more. It does. It I does. Mean, I mean, from what we've what we've seen from footage that people have have posted online, yeah, you can see it comes across that these these performers they're not even there to work; they're just there to share the joy yeah, and just it's not a it, job. Yeah, it's not a job. It's just what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It, it comes across that they're just loving what they're doing. It's a party. I mean, like I said, going from working on Halloween to this, the difference is, mm-hmm. you know, we're 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 putting on a party, yeah. And that they they literally party every night and yeah. they have a blast doing it. Yeah, they say, well, we can't be there this year, but we are sending Chris, one of our co-hosts, is uh, is heading up from further down Florida this weekend to check it yes. out. So I can't wait to hear what he says about it. But um, finally, Blake, the question we have to ask, and it's asking it's that uh, which is your favorite child question. <laughs> Which is your favorite parade float this year and why? Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so tough because there's little things I like out of uh, so many of them. Yeah. Um, I really, really enjoy the Scorpius float. I like the uh, Egyptian theme of both yes. the float and the, the characters that everybody's wearing. And then... Uh, because our big scorpion has these big CO2 jets that go off yeah. like intermittently, inevitably it always scares one or two people who are watching. Awesome. So it's like I get a little bit of Halloween Horror Night in my <laughs> yeah. Mardi Gras. <laughs> so I, like I think, that. ah, good, there we go. <laughs> so so I'll, I'll vote for that one because people love it and, and, and it, it gives a startle from time to time. That's good choice. Perfect. Yes, I like that. <laughs> That's the best answer I could have yeah. hoped for. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear. Awesome. Mardi Gras 2018 continues now through until April the 7th. So definitely, if you get a chance, please, for me, yes. go and check it out. <laughs> so we can live it vicariously yes. through them. Um, Blake, thank you so much. We really appreciate you taking time out of your, your busy schedule to talk to us. Hey, thank you, and I'll see you for 2019, right? Absolutely. You will. And if, and if you don't, <laughs> you have to come and sort Lee out for me. <laughs> <laughs> Right, 
I hope you enjoyed that interview with Blake. Blake was such a cool guy. It was really fun to yeah, talk to him. Yeah, it was really nice. Uh, I want to give him another big thanks. Uh, yeah. And thanks to Ali for help setting it up. And Absolutely. also, Darren, you might be interested in this a little bit. It turns mm-hmm. out while talking to Blake afterwards that he has his own podcast. And I said I would give him a plug. Mm-hmm. Um, it's called The Brutiful Game. And they talk a little bit about beer, but mainly they talk about, and it was weird because I've listened to it and it seems weird listening to three Americans talking about Premier League football, but it's uh, it's <laughs> quite interesting. Uh, I think one of them is a Man United supporter, one's a Chelsea supporter, one's an Arsenal supporter, and they talk about the Premier League and stuff like that. But also, uh, if you're English and you're interested in the MLS, they talk a lot about the MLS stuff as well, and it's actually a really good podcast. And how often do they talk about cool. beer? Quite a few times during the podcast. Oh, I'll check that out then. <laughs> uh, so definitely yeah go and check it out I said I'd give I said I'd give him a plug yeah beer and ball alright <laughs> so that's the end of the show so for Darren and Chris and Tracy we will see you back here next week where we are going to be talking about a very interesting survey that Universal have been sending out to people on event concepts mm. at Universal Orlando cliffhanger oh so yeah so we will see you next week cut print that's a wrap for another episode of the unofficial universal orlando podcast never miss a show by subscribing on apple podcasts and leave us a rating and review while you're there not an apple user you can listen on stitcher spotify youtube iHeartRadio, or your podcatcher of choice email us any questions or comments to podcast at uuopodcast.com follow us on facebook twitter google plus youtube instagram and pinterest just search uuo podcast Keep up with the latest news, rumors, and updates on our blog at uuopodcast.com. Thanks for listening. See you next week.